YouTube, it's your boy JB here today with the review for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. This is season number eight, it's episode number 17, and it was titled Put It On Your Mama. So, you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and just get into the video. So, we do we did find out tonight that Love and Hip Hop Hollywood will premiere on August the 5th, and um, I'm looking forward to Hollywood, you know, I'm looking forward to it. So, let's go ahead and get started with the video, you guys. All right, you guys, so um, the episode, it opened up. We see Kirk, he's at the bistro, and I'm like, damn, like, really? What are y'all doing? Like, do y'all have an estimated time frame that this shit should be done? But, you know, whatever. So we see Jock. Jock shows up, and, you know, once, um, and Jock was looking around like, damn, what's up with this place? And we find out that it's on the infamous Peter Street, where, you know, Jocelyn and uh, Tommy got into it a few years ago. So, um, this we see Scrappy shows up. So, you know, um, so this is like one of those scenes where we get on Real Housewives of Atlanta, where you have two, you know, you know, you know, like earlier on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, when Portia was talking about the situation that happened at Candy and Ty's party, and Candy was talking about it with her click. But this is what we got with this episode. So, we also saw Rashida. So, Rashida was meeting with the girls. So that was Erica, and that was, um, it was Erica, her mama, Kelsey, and uh, Kirk's mama, um, what was her name? Kelly, I believe that's what her name is. And, uh, who did I say? It was Rashida, Carly, Erica, Kelly, and her mama. So they were all meeting with each other. You know, Rashida's talking about the brunch. Erica says, you know, well, I'm not gonna be able to make it to the brunch because that's the day that she's getting ready to have the, the twins. And they were like, oh, really? She was like, yeah, you know, she's like, I'm overdue. So they're going to have to go in and take the girls out. So then um, we see, so this is where we got the, like the split, like not split screen, but you know, the, the screens, the two different people talking about the same situation. So Erica is talking about what happened at um, uh, Imani's birthday party. So at the party, somehow um, Mama Cece, um, Bambi's mama, Walked up to Mama D and uh, Mi Young and said, I'm here. What's up? Or something like that. She said, she said, yeah, she said, I'm here. And some, you know, something else. So, you know, Erica's like, you know, I went over to, um, you know, Cece and just basically was like, so you came up to my mama, you, you know, trying to check my mama. And then, you know, Erica says that Scrappy came over to her. And, you know, Scrappy was talking to her, talking about, you know, if you got anything to say to her, you come to me. And I was like, okay. And then Scrappy's telling the guys the same, you know, the same story. And Erica said that, you know, when she was talking, when Scrappy was talking to her, he was cussing her out, which I absolutely believe that. And, you know, Imani heard that. And Imani went to the bathroom and started crying, which, I, I mean, damn, y'all can even ha let, have a peaceful day for, the, for, her, for that girl for her 14th birthday. But see, here's the big thing for me where I, I get confused at. I get that Mama D and uh, Mion are her grandmothers, but what the fuck was Cece doing there? Cece is not even her grandmother. She's her, well, not even her, I wouldn't even say step grand. well, yeah, step, step grandmother. And I don't know why I use the air quotes, but she's not, so technically, Cece is not any relation to Imani at all. You know, Bambi is her stepmother. So I, I just didn't understand why Cece was even at the party to begin with it. Which I didn't understand it last week when they were talking about, you know, CeCe coming. Like, I mean, I get it. If it was Breland, I would understand it 100%. Because she's Breland's grandmother. But she's nothing to, technically, she's nothing of, you know, relation to Imani. So, I, I don't understand why she was at the party to begin with it. Um, so, then, um, you know, Jock back at the, with the guys. He's telling the guys about the situation that's going on between him and um, Sharonda. How, you know, Sharonda is listening to, not Sharonda, Kendra is listening to the shit that Carly is saying that got to Cena. Well, let's re let's back it up. Sh Kendra is listening to the shit that Cena told to Kendra, that Carly told to Cena, that Shekana told to Ken the, that Shekana, <laughs> that Shekana told to Carly, who Shekana heard it from uh, Sharonda. Like, to, like that's a big ass game. That is a big ass game of telephone. 
And, you know, I still don't get why Carly felt the need to even mention it to Cena. Of all people, why would you mention it to Jock's baby mama? The one that looks like she still wants to be with Jock. But that's neither here nor there. But, again, why? Um, So, you know, Jock is just talking about how he checked Carly, which he technically did not check Carly. Carly checked the fuck out. I don't know what the fuck her problem was last week's episode, but, you know, she did something. Um, so then we move back over to, um, you know, Rashida with um, Carly and Eric and them. And, you know, Carly's talking about um, the, the Mother's Day brunch that, you know, Rashida's having. And um, she's asking Rashida, like, what, who is the guest list? And Rashida's like, I'm assuming you mean Pooh. She says, yes. And Rashida's like, well, I did invite her to come. Like, I would hope that you guys could at least put your differences aside to have a good day. Really? You talking about Carly putting her differences aside. And then you talking about Miss Pooh, who is obsessed with shitty sheets. Putting their differences aside. Rashida, you just asking for it, ain't you? You just a glutton for punishment. But okay. If you say All so. All right, so I actually forgot to mention Scrappy with his scene with Mama D. Um, so he met up with Mama D. And, you know, Scrappy is talking about what happened at E-Money's birthday party. And Scrappy was like, you know, my, I was kind of confused about Scrappy this whole episode, especially at this scene. So, you know, Scrappy's talking about what happened at Princess e and his birthday party. So, um, what happened at the party was, like I said, um, you know, uh, Cece walked up to Mama D and Mion and said, um, you know, I'm here. What's good? Something like that. Some to that effect. And, you know, Mama D is like, you know, that bitch gonna walk up to me. She needs to keep Compton far away from here and then Scrappy didn't make no motherfucking sense to me cause Scrappy's like you know uh, Mama D should have been like you know what how about we? Pu how about I pull you to the side and we have a conversation you know let me talk to my let me you know see my grandchild and then me you can have a conversation and the thing was Scrappy was taking up for Cece instead of taking up for Mama D and me on and then you know he talking about you know when it came down to Erica Erica went up to talk to, um, you know, Cece, and he had to check Erica. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, Erica is a whole nine months pregnant. What do you think her big belly ass is going to do to Cece? She's pregnant. She ain't going to do shit to Cece, unfortunately, because she's what? Pregnant Scrappy. So I don't know what was in Scrappy's brain. And like I said, the fact that Scrappy was defending Cece, who, from what Mama D said and what Erica said, you know, she was wrong in the situation, but instead of you taking up for your mama, you taking up for that battle axe, as Mama D said, which I agree with Mama D. He was absolutely taking up for Cece instead of her and defending her. Like, it, it, it was baffling the shit out of me, the fact that he was talking about Mama D should have did this and she should have did that. No, your mother-in-law should have shut the fuck up. She should have, if she, if she didn't want to fuck with Mama D and me on, all Cece had to do was just walk by them like she didn't see them. Or she could have been cordial in the, in the whole thing and said, you know, hey, D, hi, me on. How y'all doing today? Or like I said, walk by them as if they didn't exist. And none of this shit would have ever happened. So then Scrappy goes on to talk about how, you know, after his accident, you know, he felt like everybody's all about themselves and nobody's checking in on him. And I was again confused i'm like so we go from this whole situation that happened with cc your mama and me on to talking about you and how you filmed after your accident i get it it was traumatic because he almost died so i'm not gonna knock that but the fact that you making this whole thing about you when again it was your mother-in-law who was in the wrong so i i felt i i felt like i lost some brain cells listening to scrappy talk about this shit because I, I was just thoroughly confused Anybody else out there that was confused besides me? Can't be. Okay, so next we see Jock. He's at the salon, and he's meeting up with the telephone gang, and that includes Baby Mama Cena, Shekana, Carly, and Sharonda. So, you know, Jock is trying to get down to the bottom of all the shit that's going on with the women of this, you know, in his life. Well, technically not in his life his supposed friend and his business partner and his baby mama. So, you know, um, so actually Shekinah is like, you know what, uh, Jock, I did tell Carly that, you know, I thought Kendra should know this, but 
that you was probably, you know, that you were flirting with the uh, stylist and all that stuff. And he was like, you know, where would that come from? And she was like, well, you know, and, you know, she was like, I got that from Sharonda. And, you know, he was like, Sharonda, who am I flirting with? Sharonda never really answered. And, you know, um, so then, you know, they're talking and, you know, Carly, well, actually, when she kind of said what she said, Carly was like, well, I, you know, I didn't go back and tell Kendra. And, you know, Cena says, well, I'm the one that told, um, you know, uh, Kendra what Carly told me, but Carly didn't tell me to tell her. You're right, she didn't tell you to tell her. You open, you volunteered that information. Everybody is volunteering information that they don't know is 100% factual and true. Like, that's stupid as fuck. Uh, so, like I said, it's a game of telephone. So, you know, the first person that answered the phone was the first, the person, you know, that was on the phone first was um, Sharonda, who then called Shekinah, who then called Carly, who then called Cena, who then called Kendra, and in the middle of this melee, shit got, you know, tossed and turned. Because Kendra, not Kendra, Sharonda never said that she and Jock did anything with each other. So for Cena to say that, even Carly didn't say it. Or did Carly say it? I, I forgot what Carly said. I, I, I'm being honest with you. I really forgot what Carly said. But somewhere between Carly and uh, Cena, um, it got it got misconstrued that Jock was messing with uh, uh, what's her name again? Sharonda. Like that's why I hate the game of telephone. I really do. I really fucking do hate the game of telephone. But Jock is like, you know what, Cena? I'm gonna need you to keep my motherfucking name out your mouth. I'm like, well, goddamn, tell her how you really feel, my nigga. And you know, so then he, you know, he walks away, and I don't know what the fuck he hit, but he hit something and knocked it on the ground. And then he started him and him and uh, Sharonda started going at him, with each other. And you know, he had some water and he was throwing it. I'm like, Jock, are you really sitting here throwing shit at a woman? Like, I guess she might be a bitch. So he told him, you know what, well, all of y'all get the fuck out. And I died laughing with Shekinah when she was slipping, flop, slipping and falling on that damn floor. But, you know, none of that shit, man. I mean, I get why Jock is frustrated and pissed off. Like, y'all sent her for her sp spreading, sh spreading gossip, you know, that y'all don't know is 100% true to the woman that he is in love with and he wants to marry. Okay. So, we're going to move on. Um, so, then we see Jock. He goes down to Kendra's office. And I'm gonna use I'ma definitely use air quotes for Kendra's office. Because that's like a strip, like you know, like one of them strip malls where you go to like when you're looking for like a payday loan or something like that. Actually, it looked like my college, like um, it looked like my um the you know, at my college that I graduated from, they had our administrator office downstairs in a little little section like that. But eventually, they you know they built us. They built a, a section for everything. The, you know the administration, the um, um, the financial aid office. They all put it in one little thing, and it was like almost like a kiosk. So and then for Jock to just walk into her bit, her quote, you know boardroom meeting, and interrupt it, I'm like really. So you know Jock pulls Kendra outside. And he's professing his love to Kendra. And Kendra's, you know, she's not really listening to it right now. She's like, "You got my, you got my, um, my, my team. You're not looking at me, and they're probably talking about me. And this is not the time or the place, Jocelyn." And I was just like, "Really? This is not the time or the place, huh, Kendra? Really? But you got a whole ass camera crew in there with the with the lights. They got lights in there. They have a boom over y'all." But this ain't the time or the place when Mona set this shit up for y'all. But this ain't the time or the place. Okay, Kendra, if you say so. If you say so. All right, so now I'm gonna bunch all the scenes in with the mothers and their daughters. So we saw Tokyo. So Tokyo, you know, her mama is um in Atlanta. I think her mama's name was Helen Nice or something like that. And, you know, her mom was just talking to her, and she's like, so, you know, I don't really hear from you, baby. Everything good with you? And Tokyo's like, yeah, you know, I'm good. You know, I don't have my voicemail set up, so that's probably why you can't leave no voicemails for me. And then she's like, and then her mom was like, so are you still having a hard time with your grandmother's death? And Tokyo's like, yeah, I'm still having a hard time with, you know, her death. You know, that was my partner. And, you know, her mom was like, well, why don't you just call me and talk to me? And the thing is, Tokyo feels like she would be being selfish. 
because yes, she lost her grandmother, but that was her mama's mama. So how she look, you know, going to her mama talking about how she feels about losing her grandmother when that was her mother. <coughs> and I, I think, I mean, I understand where Tokyo's coming from. I really do. Because I was super duper close to my grandmother. And when my grandmother died, you know, I, I kind of shut down. I did shut down because I spent so much of my time, you know, with my grandmother. I spent as much time, I spent equal time with my mom and my grandmother as a kid. You know, um, like I would, some morning, in the mornings, I would wake up. It depends on, it would depend. Because there were some, day, some days that I would wake up, I would spend the night, oh shit, that hurt. I would spend the night with my grandmother and I would wake up to my mama coming to take me to school and then I would go back home to my grandmother. Sometimes, it just depended on the night. Or I would go home with my mama. Actually, if it got too late, she would leave me at my grandmother's house to spend a night and you know, she would come get me for school the next morning. And then if it, if she got off the time, in, in enough time, so it wouldn't be too late for us to get home, she would come get me, we'd go home, I'd wake up to her, she'd take me to school, so. And this was like maybe about eight, when I was about eight or nine. But for a, for a minute, when we moved back to Texas, we lived with my grandmother. But like I said, I spent equal time with my mom and my grandmother. So, because I, when I, I'm talking, I'm saying it out loud, and it's kind of making it sound like, oh, your mama didn't do anything. For, you didn't spend no time with your mama. I spent a lot of time with my mother. We did so much stuff together. So, I definitely spent a lot of time with my mom. But there were also times that I just wanted to spend some time, you know, like I would always call my grandma and be like, can I? I could, we call her a big mama. And I'd be like, hey, big mama, can I come over and, you know, spend a night with you? She'd be like, yeah, come over, and, come over, you know, and I'd go spend a night with my grandma. So I definitely understood where Tokyo's coming from because, like I said, my, my grandmother was a second mother to me. She was she was a second mother. I had my mom and I had my grandma. So when, when I lost my grandmother to cancer, um, I definitely felt the emotions that Tokyo felt, and I definitely felt like it was selfish of me because... Yes, you know, I'm grieving the loss of my grandmother who, like I said, was like a second mother to me, raised me just right alongside with my mom. But then I looked at my mom and I'm like, but that was her mother. So, you know, she would ask me how I would be feeling and I'm like, I'm not, I'm like, don't worry about me. Worry about, I'm like, how are you? And she's like, you know, and she would just tell me, she was like, it's, you know, it's okay. She's like, I know you love your big mama. You guys, I'm trying my hardest not to cry. She was like, I know you loved her. And it's okay. She's like, I miss her too. She says, and she would say, and a lot of times we would talk about it. She's like, you know, I just don't talk about it because, you know, um, it would just make, it would just, you know, kind of make her sad as well as me. So I definitely understood where Tokyo was coming from. So then Tokyo also talks about how she has an issue about the fact that she doesn't, you know, her dad doesn't live in the States. And, you know, um, her mom was like, you don't need to think about that. She's like, your daddy loved you. Like, you know, he would be in his chair, rocking chair holding you. So, you know, she said, when we split up, that was my choice. Like, it wasn't that I didn't love him. She was like, your dad went back to Africa. I didn't want to go to Africa. So when he went to Africa, we decided to get a divorce. So it sounds like the, it sounds like the divorce was amicable. So, you know, it just sounds like, you know, he had some issues that went on in Africa that forced him, that kind of forced him to go back there. But the mom did not want to leave I, and I, I understand that, you know, she didn't want to leave her support system here in the States. So I definitely 100% understand that. And I'm, I, you know, I commend her for doing that. Like that had to be hard. You're married and you obviously she's, and she said, that, like you said, it ended good. So obviously she loved her husband. She just did not want to uproot herself and her daughter and go to a country she knew nothing about. So I commend her for that one. So then we see, um, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. We see Erica. Erica is getting ready to head to the hospital to have the twins. You know, her um, Imani, they're getting ready to head to the hospital. So then we come back um, to them again, and we see Erica. She's head, she's um, you know coming home from the hospital, but she doesn't have the twins with her because um, when the twins were born, they were underweight. One weighed three pounds, and the other weighed four pounds. And I'm like, wow, they are I'm like, that's really, that is really small. But I did see her post on Instagram, a picture of one of the girls. And there's one, there, well, the one little girl that I saw, she's so pretty. Um, so that pretty much is it for Erica. 
So we're going to keep it pushing to the fuck shit of this episode. You know, they could have combined last week's episode and this week's episode and we'd be good. We could be, we could finish this season. But, okay, we just going to have to talk about it. So, Carly. Carly's daughter, Jasmine, is in Atlanta. Um, and, you know, they talking. And, you know, uh, Jasmine asked Carly, like, so where is Mo? And Carly, I, I, you know what, y'all? I'm not even going to talk about Carly. I'm just going to talk about this scene. So, you know, she's telling um, her that he's not there and that, you know, Mo is going to need some counseling and that, you know, she's um, putting things on pause right now. And, then, you know, she tells her, you know, not to settle for, you know, know her worth, which that's a good, that is a good message. But what got me with Carly was when she said she raised her to be a wholesome, she raised her with um, strict values and to be wholesome. I'm like, you? You. The one that's always talking about sex. <laughs> okay. If you say so, Carly. And, you know, she's talking about people I was thinking about, think of her as the fun entertainer. Says who? I ain't never heard that bullshit. But, okay. If you say so. But, like I said, Carly says she's taking a break from Mo. So, when you so Jasmine says, it's a good thing that you mentioned a break. So, she says, I'm going to take a break from um, from college. She's like, why, why are you taking a break from school again? She says, um, because I'm being bullied at school. And I'm like, Mona, I know. I know you did not do what I think you did. You gave this girl a whole script to read, and she didn't even get the script. She got the script nearly correct. But you want me to believe that she dropped out of school because of the whole bullshit between Carly and uh, Pooh about the shitty sheets and the threesomes you expect me to believe that, Mona? You really expect me to believe that? Okay, Mona. I'm just saying, you really expect me to believe that bullshit? That is so far-fetched that don't nobody even believe it. Like, y'all wrote that up in the script, in the writing room. If y'all need somebody on the writing team, I mean, I will come in. I, I, I promise you, I, I can do that. I, I, I have a great imagination. I can make up... Well, Actually, I'm not going to say make shit up, but I can come up with stuff on the fly. Like, if you need somebody to write for you, I'm your boy. I will move to Atlanta. I will move to Hollywood. I will go to Atlanta. I'll go to Atlanta, Hollywood, and even Miami. I won't touch New York. I won't touch New York, but I will do Atlanta, Miami, and Hollywood. Like, keep me in mind, okay? Because that scene right there was stupid as the fuck. And then we got to another stupid scene with Pooh and her daughter, Najee. Um, so, you know, Pooh has three grown daughters who she says has college educations. And I'm like, wow, that apple fell way, way away from those apples. Didn't even come from the same tree. They fell from another tree. They must have fell from the, the daddy's tree because the mama's tree. Can't really say they fell from your riding tree. Because the bullshit that you've been on all season, yeah. I ain't seeing it. Um, so um, so the daughter and I, she's talking about how you know she's almost ready for kids because she's now. Here, here's where I got confused at because Pooh said that um, Najee has her own hair, her own salon. So I'm like, oh, so she must have went to cosmetology school. I'm like, cool. That's you know a trade school. There's nothing wrong. With going to a trade school, college, whatever school you go to. As long as you get an education, kudos to you. But then she said she was getting her doctorate. So I'm like, her doctorate? I'm like, now, now when it comes to, you know, beauty school, that's just, a, you, you get your board, you get your, um, you get your license and you get your cert, your certification by the state. But then the daughter says she, you know, she's going to dental school. And I'm like, I was confused. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, huh? 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 I'm going to keep saying that. And I'm not, I'm not saying that because, well, yeah. So, she, okay. So, I guess she has a salon because she, and also when she said a salon, I'm like, okay. So, here's my mindset. And tell me if I'm wrong. But my mindset was, okay, she so said she had a salon. I was like, okay, maybe she went to beauty school. 
or maybe she went to school to be a, you know, went to business school. Like maybe she went to business school and she opened up her own business, a, a hair business. So again, not, not, I'm, I, I'm like, okay. But then when she said dentist, dentist, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I, so then I, I started to think, I'm like, then she said she was going for her doctorate, her doctorate. So what? What? Again, I like I'm stuck because I know a doctor is a PhD, not an MD. So, what is this girl going to school for? Is she so? Is she is she going to school to be a dentist? Like, is that what she's going to school for? But then for Puda to say a doctorate. Like, do you mean she's going to school for her? Like, is it a doctor or is it her? Is it her residency? Like, which one is it? Like, that's what's the, that was confusing. Is it her doctorate, her PhD, her PhD? The poor even said she had. Wait, 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 wait. Back it up. Does she even have a master's? See, that's where I'm. That's where I was thrown off, and I'm gonna have to go back and watch all that shit again, cause that has thrown me off. Because Pooh said her doctorate, but the daughter says she's going to dental school. She's a, going to school to. She's almost finished with being a dentist. So that would mean she's not going to be a doc. That doesn't. So if if she's going to be a dentist, that she's not going for a doctorate. She's going for her um, residency. You know, to be a practicing. You know, technical. I mean, a doctor. Is, a, a dentist is still a physician at the end of the day. And they still have to go through medical school and all that stuff. Like on Merit to Medicine, they how, how they try to discredit Dr. Heavenly. The bitch is still a doctor. The bitch is still a PA. A, a, see, I got myself turned around. It's an MD. It's an MD, not a PhD. PhD just means you have a doctor in front of your name. Because my uh, principal, when I was in high school, he went to go to school, go to school for his doctorate. See, I finally figured, you know... Whatever. We're going to keep it pushing. And the fact that uh, Pooh tried to shade Carly's daughter about being in school for seven years. Okay. And what? Who gives a fuck? If the girl got her math, if the girl got her, um, her bachelor's, that's fine. And if she's going to school for her master's and it's taking her another two years or three, who the fuck cares? As long as that girl's getting her education, I don't give a fuck. So Pooh, for you to sit there and try to shade that child, that girl... Fuck you, your fucked up lips and your fucked up wig. Like, that shit just got on my, that really irked me. Like, because I hate when people do, I hate when people try to downplay other people's education and how long it takes them to get an education. Like, I think that's fucked up. You know, some people do go through school and get it, get their, um, their master, you know, they, uh, they bachelor's in four years or less. That's up to them. Whatever. That's up to them. And, um, you know, what else? Because for me, it took me five years to get my bachelor's. I have not gone back for my master's yet, but I am in the works to get my master's. I have to study for my GMAT, and I know what school I want to go to, and I'm just trying to make sure that I get the score that I need to get into Clark, Atlanta, in Atlanta. So, you know, I'm taking the time for myself. So, for her to shape that girl, I thought that was bullshit. Um, what else? Like, I just thought that was bullshit. Like I said, it took me five years. The reason why it took me five years is because my sophomore year of college, I played. I went to the clubs, you know, I, I drank, I smoked. I had a good time my sophomore year, and I flunked out. Unfortunately, I flunked out my sophomore year. And that's what happened to me. I flunked out, and I took a, I took a semester off, and that put it, it didn't put me behind. It didn't, I didn't get behind until I took another semester off. When I failed out again, because I had a class, because I'm not good at all with math. I suck at math. So I decided in one semester to take um, my uh, my algebra class, statistics, and something in an economics class, which all kind of involved math. And two of them, one of them, the, the uh, algebra class, I dropped that motherfucker because I didn't... I made the mistake in taking a class that where my professor was Asian and for him math came he he he, he knew how to do the math problems that he would give us but he didn't know how to teach it to us
because he could write the problems on the board, no problem. But as far as explaining it to us, how he got to the in, got to the um, the answer, he just was not good at that. So I had to drop his class, and I got a, I got a, thank God I got a W. Thank God I got a W. But then like my statistics class and my um, economic not my econ it was my statistics class yeah it wasn't economics it was statistics and um, my finance class. So my finance class I got a D in it. But it was a major class, so I couldn't I couldn't keep the D in my majors. In my major, I had to have a C or higher, and I was so fucking pissed because I really, really worked my ass off, and I was doing good with the quizzes, and it was just the exams that I stuck, I stuck, I stuck. It was my exams that I got stuck up on, because I could always get at least a seventy or a sixty on my exams, but that would, and then my final project. Like that shit was hard. that shit was hard as fuck, and in the statistics class I just and that's the one thing about going back to grad school. Like I I, I I struggle with that. I'm like so I know that I'm going to have to go. Like I want to go to Atlanta because Clark Atlanta because I want to go to a HBCU. I want that experience because I didn't get that experience in my undergrad and I really didn't want it. But um, I'm getting all off topic. But Pooh just brought that out of me because it really pissed me the fuck off. Like. Like I have a coworker, she's pregnant, and um, actually she's a she subscribes to my channel. Morgan, I don't know if you're watching this. I'm talking about you, and um, you know she um, she sent me a message a few weeks ago. She asked me how long did it take me to get through school, and I told her it took me five years. And she felt you know she was just kind of you know defeating herself about how long it's taken her to you know get through school. I said Morgan, don't even worry about that. Like because I told her like. Me and my best friend. My best friend, she graduated the year after me. So, and my best friend also had that same, we had that same conversation. She was, we was, she was seeing some of our other classmates graduating that we went to high school with. And I told her like, man, don't worry about that. The, the end result is you finally get that degree. I don't care how long it takes you to get that degree. You know, work at it. It's not gonna come, everything doesn't come easy to us. And I had to learn along the way that, you know, I don't, I don't put a, a um, I don't put high, I don't put too much on myself. If I don't accomplish something the way, when I, in the time frame that I wanna accomplish it, I'm like, there's a reason for me not accomplishing that. And, you know, I've, I've learned that over the years that, you know, things that I want in the time frame that I want it, it's not meant for me to get it in that time frame. God has a higher plan for me. So, you know, I just, and I, that's why I told my coworker, I'm like, you know, it's going to happen for you. You just have to be, you know, just stick with it. Don't, don't give up. And that goes to, that goes for anybody who is in college. If you've been in college for four years or even longer, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep going. It will all pay, you know, it will all pay off in the end. So don't give up. Please don't. And that's just that's and I just I want to put that out there because of what Pooh had to say about Jasmine. Like I don't give a fuck if it took her six years, seven years, ten years. At least at the end of the day, she can say, "I got my degree," and that's all that matters in life. Is if you set a goal for yourself and you accomplish that goal, you win. Nobody else does but you. All right, you guys, so I really did not mean to get on the soapbox with that, but it was just something that ate at me when I heard that. So, shit, it's almost 9 o'clock. So, um, lastly, the brunch. So, we see Mama D there. I think that was Mama D's daughter with her. Um, we see Pooh and Najee show up. We saw Carly and um, Jasmine there. So, then, you know, she kind of goes around the room, and she has the daughter say something nice about their moms, and they all do. So then we get over to Carly and Jasmine. So Jasmine says something nice about Carly. Then Carly takes the microphone talking about, you know, my daughter is not going to school because she's been bullied. And I took a, you know, a lie detector test. And, you know, she kind of told, um, told, told Jasmine the same thing that I just said. Don't give up. Keep going. Fuck what people say. And I was just thinking to myself, like, Carly, why of all places would you bring up this situation? Why would you pick this time? To say you took a lie detector test and that it was fake. Like, and then Pooh jumps up. I'm like, oh my God, sit the fuck down. 
Then Jasmine charges that Pooh, but security stops her. Well, the crazy ex, as Roxanne says, stopped her. So then Pooh and Najee getting, you know, trying to go at it. And I'm like, with her, I'm like, what the fuck? And they get escorted out. And I'm just like, are you fucking serious? And to Carly, just because you took that lie detector test, that does not mean shit. That could be some papers that you printed up off your computer. So it don't really prove much. But you guys, that was Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys later.